Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. Now, if you may recall, about three summers ago, I blogged Illuminations, The Secret Life of Pets, and I still think it's a good movie to this very day, despite the fact that it felt like an animal version of Toy Story, in a way, and that sausage scene felt really out of place. But still, it's a good movie nonetheless. But, just last weekend, Max and the other pets have returned to the big screen for a second movie. Question is, is this movie equally as good as the last one? Well, let's find out. Released on June 7th, 2019, the movie is The Secret Life of Pets 2. Now let's get started. In this story, Max must cope with some major life changes when his owner Katie gets married and has a baby. When the family takes a trip to the countryside, nervous Max has numerous run-ins with canine intolerant cows, hostile foxes, and a scary turkey. Luckily for Max, he soon catches a break when he meets Rooster, a gruff farm dog who tries to cure the lovable pooch of his neurosis. So, what do I think? Well, in my opinion, this movie was absolutely cute, funny, wild, and crazy. And I think it's equally as good as the first movie. But to further explain why, let's move on to Mustang Notes. On August 2nd, 2016, Universal Studios and Illumination announced a sequel to their first movie, with director Chris Renaud and writer Brian Lynch returning. Chris Melodondre and Janet Healy would produce the movie. They even hired the oatmeal writer Matthew Inman as a creative consultant. Now that's pretty cool. Anyway, as for the animation, in my opinion, Illumination did really good, just like the first movie, and I really love the setting in New York City because it brings back memories from when I visited there back in 2016, not long after the first movie was released. I also like the setting at the farm too, and I also like the many different animals featured in this movie. Not only are there dogs, cats, bunnies, hamsters, and parakeets, but there are also farm animals like a turkey, a fox, sheep, pigs, and cows, as well as circus animals like a monkey, wolves, and a white tiger. Also, this movie includes a 2D animated sequence, which is supposed to represent Snowball's imagination. And what are my thoughts on the movie's plot? Well, believe it or not, this movie actually has two story plots. You see, it's about a dog adjusting to, to a farm environment while learning to overcome his paranoia, while back in New York, a bunny, who pretends to be a superhero, is asked to rescue a baby white tiger from an evil ringmaster. Also, in my opinion, the humor in this movie is pretty funny, although... Some of it can be a little mature and gross for the younger crowd. Then again, sometimes Illumination has an adultish sense of humor in some of their movies. Speaking of which, I think their opening studio logo was handled a lot better in this movie compared to the first movie. You see, in this film, it showed a minion having trouble walking several dogs chasing a ball while crying, ILLUMINATION! <laughs> now that was pretty funny. Anyway, let's move on to the characters and their voice actors. Our main lead, Max, is this time voiced by Patton Oswalt, who voiced Quibble Pants in two episodes of My Little Pony. Now, the reason why C.K. Lewis did not reprise his role as Max 
was because he was accused of sexual misconduct with five women. Sheesh. When will folks, especially celebrities, learn to stop making themselves look like idiots? Anyway, in my opinion, Patton Oswalt does a pretty good job voicing Max, and I feel like his role in this movie is very relatable, because when baby Liam is born, Max starts to become very worried for his safety, and every time he worries, he has a habit of scratching his neck, hence why he has a cone on his neck. Max's best friend, Duke, is once again voiced by Eric Stone Street, whom I remember as Minimus from Sophia the First. While Duke's role in this movie isn't as important as Max's, I still like the parts where he and Max look after Liam, and I like Duke's playful behavior while at the farm, even if he does offend a cow in one scene. Next we have Snowball, voiced by Kevin Hart, whom I've talked about in my blog of Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. Now, in this movie, Snowball is no longer the flushed pet that he was in the first film, which, in my opinion, is a nice change in character. Ever since he was adopted by Molly, he's been going on pretend superhero adventures, and having tea parties with Molly's toy animals. Also, I think Snowball is a really funny character, and he's also very athletic. Next we have Max's girlfriend, Gidget, voiced by Jenny Slate, who got to be in Illuminations, The Lorax, Venom, and Zootopia. Now, Gidget hasn't changed a bit since the first movie. Yeah, she can be a bit of a proper-styled Pomeranian, but I still think she's very loyal to Max, especially when he asks her to look after his busy bee toy. And I found it very funny when Gidget was praised as the Queen of Cats after swallowing the little red light. Next is Chloe voiced by Lake Bell, who got to be in Mr. Peabody and Sherman and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. In this film, Chloe is pretty much the same non-caring, lazy, oversized cat she was in the first film. However, I did like the scene where she dresses Gidget and teaches her how to act like a cat so that she can sneak into the cat lady's apartment. Next we come to Pops, voiced by Dana Carvey, whom I remember from The Master of Disguise, Halloween 2 from 1981, and Hotel Transylvania 2. Now, Pops' role in this movie doesn't really add much, but I did like where he was hosting a class which consisted of several puppies and a kitten in his apartment. Later on in the movie, Pops reluctantly lets a white tiger named Who stay for a night, but he kicked out the little kitten due to the destruction he caused afterwards. We also have Norman, a guinea pig voiced by director Chris Renaud. Now, I don't really know if I talked about him when I blogged the first movie, but in case I didn't, I think Norman is a very feisty and reckless character, and in this movie, Norman is an absolute riot while driving a remote-controlled car through the New York streets. The other pets in the movie are voiced by Hannibal Perez, Bobby Moyhan, and, of course, my favorite voice actress, Tara Strong. For the new characters, we have Daisy, a Shih Tzu dog voiced by Tiffany Haddish. Daisy is a character who asks Snowball to help rescue Who, 
the White Tiger, from the abusive Russian circus ringmaster, Sergei. But, by far, the best new character in this movie is Rooster, a Welsh sheepdog voiced by Han Solo slash Indiana Jones himself, Harrison Ford. The reason why I like Rooster the most is, well, despite his tough and strict personality, is that Rooster makes a great mentor character, and I like how he handles the animals on the farm. Plus, he tries to help Max overcome his paranoia by having him help rescue a lamb named Cotton from an apple tree on the edge of a cliff. Also, I really liked when Rooster gave Max his very own bandana. And now let's move on to my final words. Overall, The Secret Life of Pets 2 is still an equally good movie, even if some of the humor can be a tad mature at times. The animation is still fantastic. The characters are all memorable and lovable as they were in the first film, even if some of them don't have much of a big role, and a few characters in the first film are absent here. Plus, I think Patton Oswalt does a great job voicing Max, and I think his wife Meredith and his daughter Alice should be very proud of him. Also, the story's moral of not to be too over-paranoid does give a nice life lesson, because I got sick when I had a habit of being paranoid once. Also, if you folks liked the first movie, like I do, then go check this movie out. And I think your kids will like it too, especially if they love animals. I give this movie a 93% out of 100. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me for my next blog, where we... We return to the Pokemon Sinnoh Trilogy, Mustang Power.